Hey guys. Okay. I'm nervous. It's gonna be good. I am gonna share all about my acne journey today. I had the worst acne of my whole life last year and it was super hard. I really struggled with self-confidence. I have learned so much going through it and I wanted to share about all of it today. First, I wanna give you the backstory of my skin. So this journey lasted basically through all of 2019. The severity of it was about September to January. The very worst of it was. This is what it currently looks like this morning before I did my makeup. In junior high, I struggled with acne. I used Proactive. It worked for me really well. I used it for 10 years. As I started getting older though, it stopped working for me. It just wasn't as effective as it was before when I was a teenager. So then after I had my fourth baby, my skin started becoming more like the underground zits. You know, they're just big bumps. You can't hide them. They hurt. I started trying a ton of different face washes and I got pregnant with our fifth. My skin was awesome when I was pregnant. I didn't really worry about it or even think about it. So fast forward, I had her stopped nursing and the acne came back. But then it just progressively started getting worse and worse and the older that she got, the worse it got. So she's almost three now and I've never had an age gap that long between babies or about two years apart. The reason it got so bad is because having babies, your hormones, they just go crazy. And then I never fully figured out how to get them back to normal after having them because it just always would fix itself when I was pregnant. So, pull up my notes. <laughs> Also, another huge factor that I didn't realize up until recently was I got an IUD after I had our last and had it in for about two years. It was the copper one, the one with the non-hormonal because I always am affected by birth control. So I thought, let's go with the non-hormonal, I'll be perfect. But if you know anything about the copper one, it makes you bleed more and I was losing so much blood every single month and it was having a huge effect on me with my iron. I always have struggled with low iron. So my iron was getting lower and lower as time was going on, which was throwing off my adrenals, which was throwing off my thyroid, spiraling to all these things. And I don't ever plan on being on birth control ever again. I looked into intermittent fasting and I read a ton about it. I researched it like crazy, long-term, terrible for me. Maybe it has to do with age too. I turned 30 and that's when everything like drastically started going downhill. Also, I was losing all of my hair, at least half of my hair, more than I do after I have babies. That's ultimately why I decided to cut my hair last year. I was tired. I wasn't motivated. I wasn't driven. I don't know, like nothing was right. Moody. I was also putting on weight, nothing crazy, but it just wasn't my normal. I had put on 10 pounds really quickly and then come to find out that's because my thyroid wasn't working. So it was a kind of a lot of factors. It wasn't just one thing that did it and it could be different for you too. So I'm just gonna share my story on what happened to me, but everyone is so, so, so different and I can't stress that enough because I watched so many videos. It was like my life, my job, watching acne videos and trying to figure out how to fix mine and none of them applied to me. And it was so frustrating because I couldn't understand how this would work for this girl, this would work for this girl and yet nothing would work for me. I could not find an answer. So it sent me into doing my own research then to find someone who would help me further. So I'm gonna kind of show you pictures and take you along the journey with me to where I started, when it got the worst, and then how it got better. As time went on, it just kept getting worse and worse and I think I just started developing all these intolerances to foods that I didn't have before. But what I came to find out ultimately is that my acne was all caused from my insides. I saw a dermatologist, she saw my skin, and she said, you need to go on Accutane, and that's how you're going to fix your skin. And it just did not feel good to me. I didn't feel like that was the answer. You know, you get to a point where you're willing to do anything to get your skin back to what it used to be. And that's kind of the point I was at. All I felt like it would do is cause more internal problems. I just really didn't want to go that route. I wasn't always this way. I didn't always struggle with acne to this degree. And so I just knew that I could fix it other ways. I wanted to be healed from the inside. I wanted this to be a forever healing. I didn't want to have to worry about it coming back. I didn't want to have to worry about side effects of Accutane or any other birth control or pyronolactane. I just 
knew it, I wanted it to be natural and I wanted it to be lasting and forever. And this way, I know that it is. The thing that cured my acne was natural supplements, vitamins. So this is what gets me started on my journey. Before I go further, I do want to share all the things that I did that didn't work because so many videos that I watched, I basically did everything that they said to do that did not work. And I just want to touch on it. And I'm not saying these things won't work for you because maybe they absolutely will. But for me, I was an extreme case. And so this is obviously going to be an extreme video because of how severe my acne was. But I'm just going to list off everything. I have it here on my phone. I'm just going to read it off. These are all the things that I tried that did not work. I changed my laundry detergent to a more natural one, which is great. I still do have a natural one. I changed my pillowcase every single night. I bought satin pillowcases instead. I changed out all my hand soaps, body soaps, shampoo, conditioner to all natural options, things that were cleaner ingredients. I use the app Think Dirty. It tells you if your ingredients are clean or dirty to the extent of it. So I use that for literally everything, including makeup, everything. I use paper towels to blot my face dry after washing it instead of using a towel because towels can carry a lot of bacteria. I still actually do use paper towels. I switched all of my makeup to non-comedogenic. I didn't wear makeup for two weeks seeing if makeup was the problem, literally did nothing. I was too embarrassed to leave my house so I just hid in my house. I changed my diet 100%. I tried no meat, I tried no oil, I tried low fat, I tried a plant based diet, I tried honestly everything and long term messed my body up so bad. I read books about what to eat to help fix acne and they were the exact opposite of what I needed, which I will get to my diet soon. I bought literally 38 different face washes, I counted. I do have a picture of 28 of them. I'm missing 10 because I gave them to my sisters, but I will put that here. This is just face wash. This doesn't include makeup that I switched as well. well. Along with hand soap, body soap, shampoo, conditioner. I drank a ridiculous amount of water every single day. I cleaned all my makeup brushes daily. I tried fungal acne shampoo because for a while I thought I had fungal acne too because I watched a video that talked about that and not to say that's not a thing, but that's just not what I had. I watch videos that were talking about supplements to take so I bought all those supplements that they talked about and took those and it was also a huge contributor for my face getting as bad as it did because I was taking supplements that I didn't need. I was taking zinc, vitamin A, pantothenic acid, probably saying that wrong, uh, 30 billion probiotics, balance from Alani Nu. All those did not work for me and were not what I needed specifically. I was eating lots of probiotic foods with every single meal. I was only washing my face once a day instead of twice a day thinking maybe that was better to wash it less. But then I switched back to twice a day. All of this did absolutely nothing and everything only got worse and so, so, so much worse. All to say that something major was going on inside of my body that needed to be addressed and needed to be healed. And it was coming out through my skin and that was my skin's way of telling me and showing me, hey, something's wrong, you need to fix it and nothing topically is going to fix this. And again, I'm not saying none of these things will work for you because they most certainly could, but this is just my journey and for me, they did nothing. I ended up finding a hormone specialist I see her and get my blood work done every three months. That's not necessarily required once you start getting back up to where you need to be like every six months or even once a year. Sarah Slade Wellness, that's her name on Instagram. Okay, so in her profile, it says functional natural nurse practitioner, bioidentical hormone balancing, regenerative medicine. I will leave all of her information below. Her name is Sarah. She changed everything for me. I learned so much from her. She just changed everything. It like makes me emotional because I don't know where I would be if I didn't find her. She works in Arizona, but I told my sister-in-law about her. She was struggling, not with acne, but just other problems, not feeling like herself. And I gave her her information and they were able to work together. I think it was through phone call or email or both, but even if you don't live in the same state, you can still work with her. I would use a cold roller on my face morning and night to help with the inflammation and it really helped calm it down and it was kind of the only thing that would help with my pain. At this point, my acne was terrible. I felt terrible. I didn't feel like me. I didn't look like me. It was um, really hard. 
So I went to Sarah. She asked me what was wrong, asked me how I was feeling. I told her I wanted to fix my acne. I wasn't feeling like myself. I mean, honestly, everything, everything was wrong. So she took all of that in consideration and I got my blood work done. I did so many tests. Then I came back to her with the results and she was like, are you okay? <laughs> how are you feeling? And I was just, you know, the same. And she said, I cannot believe you're functioning the way that you are because you are anemic. You are basically low on every vitamin. You are so depleted of everything that you need that I'm honestly surprised that you're doing as good as you are. Which was so validating. There was like proof to back it up with all these results. You know, for so long, and it had been a couple years, I had started feeling this way and it was just getting worse and worse. I was just... You just think it's in your head, you know, you think it's just me. I don't know what's happening, but this is just the new normal. And she had said, if you did this test and went to a doctor, they wouldn't have tested this certain thing. The results would have come back that you were fine. But because I ran this specific test, which it then told me that you're anemic and then spiraled into all these other things. So it's so important that if you're going to someone, make sure they are specialized in hormones. It's not a doctor that's just running the generic tests. You're gonna need deeper tests to find this out. Well, it costs so much, I can't afford that, or, you know, I just don't wanna spend the money on that right now. And to that, I say, what is more important than your health? What is more important than your happiness? What is more important than you fixing yourself first, which in turn, you can help other people? Nothing, like, you can't put a price tag on it, and if I think about all the money that I've spent in everything that I thought was working, face washes, all this topical stuff. If I had just gone to her from the get-go, it would, obviously I had to find her and go through that whole journey to find her, but I'm saying I wish I knew beforehand I could have gone to her and found her and gotten all of this figured out. I would have saved, for one, tons of money not doing all this trial and error, but I just feel 100% myself again and you cannot put a price tag on that. If you have acne on the lower half of your face, mine was all here down. Low is like right here on my neck. I remember having one right here that stayed for two months. It was so painful. That is because you, my friend, sadly, have a hormonal imbalance. And that is where all of my acne was. I didn't have any acne here up. If I wore a mask, you would never know. Another thing causing my acne was I discovered that I had leaky gut. When I got the blood results back, she was suspicious of it. And then I actually did get intolerance tests done, food intolerance tests. I sent those results into her and then she told me what to do with them. So it came back that I was intolerant to avocados, blackberries, pork, sesame seed, just all these things <laughs> that I was eating every single day basically. And so she told me, get off all these things for a year and then once your body has fully recovered, you can start reintroducing those things and seeing how you react. I will also be sure to leave the food intolerance test that I took, I'll leave that down below. They have a few different options, but I did the silver, which was $99. She also told me to go off gluten and dairy indefinitely. I have been off of that along with all the things I'm intolerant to for six months and it's going really good. I also find that if I eat too much sugar, then I will break out like on my upper lip and chin. No matter what the sugar, like artificial or honey, like if it's just too much sugar and if it's just spiking my insulin too much, then I will have a breakout. But I can have it in moderation just as long as I'm not going crazy. I do always keep everything as natural as possible. I mean, organic ingredients. I just have found that that works best for me and that's what my body likes the most. Although, I will say that on date night, if my husband gets a ice cream or something, I can now handle having a bite. <laughs> so I will take the tiniest little bites to make it last as long as it can to basically equal like one big spoonful. I won't break out from that. And so I can handle that. My body's healed enough to be able to handle that. So that's like my treat that I look forward to. But I have so many other treats that I just don't feel like I'm missing out. I have so many like recipes of things that I make that are, and just look at Pinterest, gluten-free, dairy-free recipes. There are also some that are really bad, so they're not all good, but 
You will find the good ones. Costco has a lot of options for gluten-free, dairy-free treats. I have found amazing substitutes. You do have options. I started doing celery juice every single morning. I have that. If I forget, I'll have it in the afternoon, but I try to make sure that my stomach is a little bit empty before I have it so that way it can just absorb the best. That has been a really big boost in my skin and it just is really good for you. If you're gonna do celery, cannot stress this enough. The difference between very light green celery, dark green celery is crazy. So always go for the light. Also, to help boost my iron, because I still am trying to get my iron up to where it needs to be, I will have a warm lemon water in the morning. How can you do that? Gluten and dairy, that's like my life. What do you even eat, you know? But for me, I was so willing to do absolutely anything to not have this be a part of my life. I don't have to worry about it. I didn't want to have to feel like I had to spend forever doing my makeup, feeling self-conscious still even with it on. I just didn't want that in my life and I knew I could get that. And so for me, it wasn't even a question. I was thrilled to find out the things I was intolerant to, what it does to my body and it's just not worth it to me. Yeah, that's gonna taste good for a few minutes and then I'm gonna have to suffer the consequences for a week to come, so no thank you. But I understand that that's not easy for everyone to do, and of course it's not easy for me either, but it's just something that I'm choosing to do every single day, and once I kind of make the choice, it becomes so much easier than every day waking up thinking, I don't know, maybe I won't do it, maybe I will, but because I'm determined to make it happen, it's not that hard anymore. She first put me on 25 natural supplements to take every single day. That's how far gone my body was and all the things I was lacking. Along with, I was low on testosterone, which I thought I was high on testosterone because that is a result of, if you have acne right here, that could be too much of testosterone. That's when I'm saying it's just so important to get your blood work done because I was taking things to lower my testosterone thinking, oh my gosh, I'm probably so high on testosterone because of where I'm having my acne. I actually take oxytocin, progesterone, and testosterone. The progesterone for a while was also making me have more melasma, which melasma you get when you're pregnant. It's excessive progesterone because I'm on progesterone and it's making my melasma come back. And so we're trying to figure out a balance. It's just brown spots that you get like kind of under your eyes, your lip. I get it on my forehead, um, cheeks. So that's what melasma is. And I do still have that, but it is also getting a lot better because we've lowered the progesterone. Now I'm going to show you all the supplements I use. I don't have every single one from when I first started because we backed off and I'm not on quite as many anymore because I don't need it. After we healed my gut, I didn't need quite a few of those supplements anymore. Although I will insert pictures if that is helpful for you. These are the supplements that I take every single day. This is a prenatal. I take three of these a day. Fish oil. I take two of these a day. Adrenal complex, I take two of these in the morning and then two in the afternoon. Magnesium, I take two in the morning and then one at night. COQ10, I take one a day. Vitamin C, I take one a day. And then iron, I take one a day of these. Vitamin D drops and I take five of these a day. At first I was taking 10, now I'm down to five. Everything in this handy dandy little organizer. So to make it very clear, the thing that improved my skin was all the supplements to get my hormones back to where they need to be. Then on top of it is when I came in with the food, not eating gluten and dairy and all those things I was intolerant to, my skin was improving so fast and it was so exciting and the facials were just helping even more on top of it. Another factor was I started using Curology. Now I wanna move on to face products. All the face products that I use that have been so helpful and so beneficial. If I can find a link for it, I'll link it below. I tried, like I said before, 38 different face washes and then I found Curology from a friend who used it and it's only five or six dollars to ship it. So your first order is free, you just pay for shipping. But it's cool because you send in pictures to a dermatologist and they look at your photos based on your photos. They write a prescription for just your face specifically. So first, I use this, I get it wet, and then I'll just lightly get all my makeup off. Then, this is Curology. It's awesome. 
I will double cleanse. I just feel like it gets everything off. Then when my face is 100% dry, I will go in with this. These are the ingredients that are in mine. Since you do have to send in pictures, your ingredients could be different than mine. And then my moisturizer. So for spot treating, I use this guy and it is kind of like magic in a bottle. It really is incredible. But what I do is I wash my face first, just use like a drop and put it on the zit or put it on my finger and then just like tap it on the zit wherever it is. And then I wait for that to dry completely and I would go in with this. As I was editing the video, I have totally forgot to mention this. This is a high frequency tool that I use when I spot treat. So what I'll do is I'll put a little dot of this on my face and then I will go in with this on the active acne just those little spots. I just used this tool. They have several others, but I just use this one. I got this done when I got a facial and I really noticed that it helped with my spots. So I bought it on Amazon. So this is how it works. It has a little knob down here. You'll start to hear it and then pretend this is my face and I'm just gonna tap it like that on any acne spots just a few times and it really helps just zap those zits. I love it, it works so good. When I had open sores um, from picking because yes, I did pick unfortunately and that's what created all the crazy scarring. It is so hard not to pick but most of them because they were so deep I would pick it and all it would do is just go back into my skin which would make it last like two weeks longer than it needed to and it was the worst. <laughs> now I don't pick. I really don't. If it's white I just let it be. I know it's so hard not to pick white trust me I know because I have a face full of scars to prove how hard I know it is not to pick. But I really don't pick my face anymore because I saw the damage that it did to my skin and it's just not worth it. It's not worth it. Wish I had the patience for that before, but you live and you learn. When I had open sores, I used this. It's a topical healing and I would just squirt it directly on my skin and just like use it as a serum. So before I would moisturize, and just pat it into all my sores and it's super helpful. You can't have active acne getting microneedling because what it's doing is puncturing your skin and you do not want it to be puncturing active cystic acne. And that's why I had to wait to get it until my skin was completely done breaking out like that. That's why I was doing a lot of chemical peels at first because you can have active acne with chemical peels. Microneedling has been the biggest help in my acne scars. This is kind of like microneedling. It's just obviously like a way less invasive way of doing it because it's at home. When I went to get my facial done after it had been a couple months of staying away, she was impressed with how much my skin had improved and it's because of this guy. So this also helps product absorb so much deeper in your skin and helps so so well with your skin. Obviously though do not go over this like on your acne because that's going to hurt and that's just not a good idea. You really can only use this once your acne has healed and you're just trying to fix scarring now. It has these little needles. At first I was using a derma roller but I looked into that too and it's not fully getting you know, they're rolling, it's rolling like into your skin, so it's like pricking it at an angle and then coming up at a different angle. So it's not great for your skin. This is better because the same amount of evenness in your skin and it's not going at an angle like a derma roller does. Stamp, I would just really just stamp my face, go over it two or three times, stamp on all the acne scars. This is also really good for acne scars because it's gonna lighten, um, it brightens and lightens, so. This is also another little gem that I've been using. It's a way cheaper option. I do find though, it's just not quite as good as the other things that I'm sharing. If you're on a, you know, you just don't wanna spend a lot of money on it, this is a good option. And I have suggested this before, so I do still like it. I just find that now that I have this, I'm really not ever going towards this anymore. But it still is good. Another thing that I have really loved to do at home in between my facials is I use retinol. I have the 0.5, I also have the 1.0 and I can do this and the 1.0. I am constantly getting facials and using this and so my skin is toughened up with 1.0. It's so intense. You really don't want to do it that often. Just really listen to your skin. See how your skin's feeling. If you find this is really helping also with my acne scarring, I probably only use this once a week. So those are all my products. I'll insert a picture of all of them to help you recap on them. 
I asked some questions on Instagram. I feel like this will really help answer any of the open questions that you still might have. Honestly, looking back, the thing I'm most grateful for is that I struggled to the degree that I did because if my acne hadn't gotten as severe as it did, I don't know if I would have gone to those extreme measures of trying to find someone who would figure it out like from the inside, you know? Maybe I would have just always felt not myself just considered that the new normal. How did you hide it so well? Um, okay. <laughs> so I remember doing a campaign. I had to go to the store and I opened up the camera, my phone camera to start, you know, recording myself talking about the product. And I just started crying because my skin was so bad that no lighting was going to hide all my sores. That was a rough moment. And I just remember thinking, I can't even do this. I started saying no to so many jobs because I was too embarrassed, honestly. I didn't want people seeing my face and I didn't feel comfortable. And so when I filmed that campaign, I basically just filmed the product. I didn't, I just had my husband show me a little bit, but it was kind of like more my head. I was just way too embarrassed. How did I hide it? I really didn't show my face a whole lot, honestly. People would be like, are you okay? Like you're not really on stories that much anymore. And I wasn't. I I didn't feel secure enough. I showed my kids a lot and I just kind of make the things be about them. If I would take a picture and it was head on and you could see a massive zit, I would edit that out. And I wouldn't even feel bad about it. <laughs> it was the only thing I could do to make myself feel like me. I didn't feel like I looked like me. My face was swollen or I just made sure I had good lighting. Most of the time, I just made sure I was in good lighting. It had to be a little bit dimmer or it had to be super exposed. Makeup covered the redness. I was just trying to hide the bumps. That's how I did it. But obviously, if you saw me in person, you would see all of my bumps. You just can't hide bumps. You can hide redness though all day. And I've become pretty dang good at hiding redness, if I do say so myself. But the biggest tip is I leave, I'll do my foundation and then I leave concealer on discoloration or scarring and I let it sit for a several minutes. Then I go in with a brush and just dab it out. If you use a beauty blender, it's going to kind of take away that product. But if you're dabbing it in and using that brush, it really looks pretty good. I do have like a short little video of me doing this on Instagram. It's in stories. But... If you want, I could also do a YouTube one. So let me know. Makeup makes me break out a lot. What makeup do you use during acne? I use Estee Lauder foundation. I did switch to Tarte Amazonian clay because it's non-comedogenic, but I truly just found that makeup didn't matter to me. For me, makeup doesn't affect my skin. In some ways, I feel like it actually helps to clear it up because it's blocking all the dirt from coming in my skin. So I truly feel like I break out less when I wear makeup. Not everyone's like that though, but for me, makeup was never a factor. How did you know what treatment worked? How long does it take to see results? About one to two weeks after taking my vitamins is when I started noticing, whoa, my acne is calming down and the ones that I was having were drying out. A lot of face washes too will say, well, first you have to purge and first you have to get rid of all this stuff before you can get better. If I'm ever purging and things are coming out, it's not because it's getting better. That's just what's gonna happen. Some people though, that is the case and they do purge and then it does get better. But for me, I can tell right away if something's gonna help because it just right away does start helping. It never gets worse before it gets better. So the vitamins started helping right away. Not eating gluten and dairy, the intolerance started helping right away. The curology started helping right away. Gradually, very slowly, I'd say, honestly, probably fast forward three months later, only just to improve more and more and more. It is a slower process, but also at the same time, kind of drastic. When I look at pictures and see like the difference between even two weeks would make, it was crazy to see how much it would improve. If it's right for you, it will gradually keep, keep improving. Do you also get back acne or acne anywhere else? Totally. I'll get acne like on my chest. Well, I did, yeah, my back. Really, since doing all the vitamins, I don't get it anymore because that's what was causing it was like the internal problems that were just coming out in my skin and my face was the worst but it was coming out kind of everywhere even my legs i would get some acne once i fixed the insides it just kind of fixed the outside oh um, do you have pcos i do not have pcos i think that's a common misconception that oh if you have acne right here you have pcos no i did not do you use an spf this spf every single day 
no matter what, or this one. I tend to go with the other one because it's 50 SPF and this is 40. It's also gonna help lighten your spots quicker because you're not being exposed to the sun and getting sun damage. Always wear an SPF. The reality of it, it's not an overnight fix. And so I realized the sooner I decided to be patient and stop having these expectations that I need to have perfect skin, I just had such high expectations basically for myself, but I've just found the more that I became to love myself and the more I told and shared about it with people, it was incredibly empowering and freeing. And all of a sudden the pressure that I had on myself was gone and I could just embrace it and be like, yeah, this is me and this is my face and this is my acne and it really sucks. But if you struggle with this, you're not alone. And I know what that feels like. It's okay. It's okay for it to be hard. Like you don't always have to put on a happy face and say everything's fine. Like it's okay to cry about it. It's okay to open up to the people you love and cry about it and tell them how hard it is because I just wish so bad that I did that sooner. I would wash my face and I'd crawl in bed and I didn't want him to touch my face until I finally let him in and started accepting myself then I could let him just like love me. There was one night, uh, I was crying about my face, which was honestly probably like the 50th time I had done it. It was like a new regular thing every night. I would just cry myself to sleep. And not just because of the look of it, but it hurt. Even if I would lay or even just putting my head one side, the pressure would go this way, which would just hurt my face. And then I, it just always hurt. My husband came in and he didn't even say anything. He just crawled in bed with me and he started stroking my hair. And honestly, it was probably like an hour and he just didn't even say anything. And it was exactly what I needed. I didn't want someone to tell me, it's okay, you'll get over it. All I needed was just someone to be there. I didn't even want him to say anything. I just wanted them there and to know they loved me. And that's what he did for me. And it opened up everything and changed everything for me. Another thing that I did, I was really struggling. It was just getting worse. It was only getting worse, worse, worse. And I took our five kids. I went to California. I didn't tell my husband I was going. I just went. I was so mad at my face. I was mad at life. I was just mad and I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to figure this out and I couldn't find answers and everything was a waiting game. It was so so healing. I ended up getting there. My husband called me when he got off work and he said, where are you? And I said, we went to California. He was so sweet and he knew why. And he said, why don't you stay another day? Get that piece you're looking for. And so I did. And we just played at the beach. After that trip, I was able to come home and open up and start talking to people and telling them, like, I shut my family out. I shut just everyone out. And I could finally start talking about it and saying, hey, this is why I shut you out. And it was just my own thing and I'm so sorry. And it brought our relationship so much closer together. Uh, kids are kids and they're gonna point out your flaws, you know, especially if they're noticeable and if they can see them on your face. All kids did it and that's okay. They're just super honest. <laughs> and so when my kids would ask me, I would just say, yeah, mommy has red owies on her face and I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to get rid of them. But will you, you know, say a prayer that I can help figure it out? And so, my daughter especially would pray every single night for my red owies to go away. When we were at the beach, my son, I had just taken a picture and I looked at the photo. I mean, no makeup could hide the, these bumps. Instead of crying, I wanted to make light heart of it and I wanted to laugh about it and I just, kids always say the truth and so I wanted to see his reaction to it and I said, what is that? What's on mommy's face? All he said was, that's my mommy. He didn't even see my acne. He didn't even see it. And it kind of made me feel like the people who love you, they won't even see your acne. You are not your acne. You're you. And what you look like does not define you. At all. What anyone looks like doesn't define them. I look at people now, it's like a whole new level of, I just want to know people's heart. And I just want to know, like, what they're going through. And I literally could care less what people look like. I love getting ready. I will always love getting ready, doing makeup, doing my hair. That's just who I am. And I love that about me. But do I care if other people get ready? Do I care if other people have their hair done or put on makeup? Absolutely not. I could care less. 
I don't know, it just like really made the right things feel really put into perspective and just felt good. That's the biggest takeaway I have from it is that you are not your acne, nor will you ever be your acne, nor will you ever be what you look like. So I wish I could say one thing fixed my acne. I wish I could say one thing caused my acne. I wish it was simple, but unfortunately it was not and that's okay. And I learned so much about food, about my health, about my body. And now I can eat something and I know exactly what made me break out. I know exactly how long it takes for that food to make me break out. It's kind of crazy and kind of amazing how aware I am of what my body does and is capable of. And I love that part of it so much. I hope that this is helpful for you, even if you have just a few breakouts and you just decide to change up your diet. Maybe that would be totally the thing to fix it, or maybe your face wash would be the thing to fix it like it was for me all growing up. I didn't have to worry about food or any of those other things, but maybe it is that you will need blood work done and you'll need deeper answers and to really dig for those answers. Okay, I think that's it. If you stuck through this whole thing, you're a champ, that was really long. I hope so much that this helped you and thank you so much for watching.